Good morning. Today we'll look at chapters 18 and 19 of Genesis, and tomorrow's readings are chapters 20, 21, and 22. Um, and I, I really thought about this morning that I normally I give a little bit of an overview of each book of the Bible before I begin reading and studying it. I didn't do that with Genesis. but So briefly, Genesis, the word means beginning or origin. And so the Genesis being the first book of the Bible is the beginning. And the first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis uh, talk about kind of more of the, say, just the, the very early history of the creation uh, of, of everything in humanity, uh, God's giving humanity dominion over the earth. We have um, the temptation, the, you know, the first sin. We have Cain killing Abel. We have the, the Tower of Babel. We, we have Noah and the Flood. We have a lot of stuff happening in the first 11 chapters. And then as chapter 12 starts with the calling of Abram, now we're getting into more the, the history of the Israelites, of the Jewish nation, of, of God's chosen and called people. And, and we will, uh, at the end of Genesis, we, we, uh, um, we are at the time of Joseph and uh, the death of Joseph and the Israelites journey then to to Egypt and, and different things going on. But so uh, the first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch, the, the books of Moses, the books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And so Genesis is the, the very early history of, of creation and then the early history of God's chosen people, the Israelites. So uh, as chapter 18 begins... Uh, it says the Lord appeared to Abraham by the Oaks of Marm. So again, I mean, Abraham and Sarah have been renamed. It says by the Oaks of Marm, or Mamre, however you want to say it. Um, and in chapter 13, you know, as, as Abraham and Lot went their separate ways, it says that Abram, Abram at that time settled by the Oaks of Marm in the area of Hebron. So, I mean, Abraham is still in that same location and he looks out in the heat of the day so so this is around noon and when you know it would be a surprise to see these three travelers because most of them would have been um you know in out of the heat of the day you know in the in the area of the world anyway he sees them he runs from the tent entrance and he bows down to them and he addresses them my lord if i have found favor with you and so, I mean, I, I, whether he recognizes it as God right away, you know, he says, my Lord. And, and as, as this conversation goes on, you know, he says, stay here a while and let me prepare something for you. So in my estimation, he understands that it's God and, or messengers from God. And I think what it turns out as we read on, it's, you know, one of them is God and the other two are angels because then, you know, when we get further on, we'll say that. But Abram, Abraham encourages them to stay. Let me prepare something for you. He goes and he has Sarah bake some bread and then he takes, I mean, and he, he has a, a calf, you know, uh, butchered and ready and to, to, uh, to hasten to prepare it. And he, you know, so this, this took a little while for this meal to get prepared. And these men wait there. And he, it says he takes curds and milk from the calf he'd prepared and set it before them. And and then he stood while they ate. And then they asked of him, you know, where's your wife, Sarah? And he says, well, they're in the tent. And so, I mean, they didn't have houses like we do. I was thinking about that earlier this morning of how fortunate we are with with where we live at, at the time, you know, just even think about a hundred years ago in North Dakota or 200 years ago, you know, any place or 500 years ago, what, what kind of places people had to live, but here they were living, you know, in a tent and, and that was, you know, the way it was for everybody. And then, and then the, the one says, uh, you know, it's interesting. They said to him, so we got, you know, three, three individuals, you know, three men, they said to him, you know, and so very meant, you know, very much to me, this is a picture of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he says, they're in a tent. And then one said, I will certainly return in a year and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. 
And Sarah overheard this and laughed. And, um, you know, and it says, you know, Sarah was listening and she was advanced in age and it had ceased to be, you know, with Sarah, the manner of a woman, you know, so she was well past childbearing age. So she laughed and she says to herself, after all this time, and I'm so old, you know, and then the Lord asks Abraham why his wife laughed. And again, Sarah hears and she says, she's a fear. She says, I didn't laugh. And then the, the, the Lord says again, is anything, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? You know, so this, you know, something that's impossible for human is, is completely possible for the Lord, you know, with all things, with with God, all things are possible, you know, or with God, nothing is impossible. We, we read that in the Bible as well. And then he says again, at the set time, I will return and Sarah will have a son and you will name him Isaac. And the name Isaac in, in many um, things says uh, of laughter or, you know, of joy. And so the the name Isaac is a play on Sarah's words, or maybe that meaning comes from this very instance here. But you know, it says that. And so then the men set out and they look towards Sodom. They're on their journey to Sodom. And, you know, we've had so much happen in Genesis already. We've had, as I, as I just mentioned, you know, the, the first sin, Cain and Abel. We had Tower of Babel. We've had Noah. And here now, in chapter 18, the men look towards Sodom. And remember that Lot had settled in that area of Sodom. And then the Lord says, shall we hide or shall I hide from Abraham what I'm going to do? And, you know, well, they, they don't hide it from him. And they tell Abraham they're going to Sodom because of this, this great and mighty nation and in uh, this city and, and they're going to, they're going to destroy Sodom. And, and Abraham Ask the question, are you going to destroy the righteous with, righteous with the wicked? And, you know, because Sodom knows his, his nephew Lot is there, and he's concerned for Lot. And, and he says, suppose there are 50. And the Lord says, for the sake of 50, I won't. And I'm sure you're familiar with the story that in, in groups of five, from 45 to 40 to 35 to 30, and all the way down to 10, God says, if I find 10 righteous, I will not destroy the city. And the city of Sodom was a huge city. It wasn't just, you know, a, a town of a hundred of like Bethlehem or, or that. It was, it was a large, large city with many people. And I, I know somewhere at some point in time I read uh, about how big a part, you know, population they thought it was, but I don't remember that right now. But God goes and he doesn't find 10. He doesn't find 10 righteous. He finds Lot. And, yeah, we read chapter 19. So we, we, he finds Lot and his wife and, and his two daughters. And, and, you know, Lot sees these two angels come because the Lord stayed to talk to Moses, to Abram, Abraham, rather. So Abraham and God were still, you know, over here talking, and the other two, uh, who went as angels and went to the city. And Lot met them and said, come and stay in my house. They were going to pitch a tent in the center of the city. And I said, oh, no, no, that's not going to be safe. Come stay in my house. Well, people find out that these two men are there. And the men of the city come. And they say to Lot, you know, send those men out. We want to have sex with them. I mean, and as many people as will say that the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah were that they did not take care of the widows and the orphans, that's one of the sins. But, in you know, but also right here, it says, you know, they were, <laughs> sodomy is sex between two men. And, 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 you know, this is part of the sinfulness of them. And, and God knew that that wasn't what it was to be. And, and, and Lot says, you can't do this to these guys. He, Lot recognizes that they're heavenly beings. That you, I mean, doing that would be such a horror. I mean, even a worse sin than going against a man, but to go against an angel of the Lord that way. And, and Lot, I mean, it, it just baffles my mind, but he says, here, here are my two daughters who are virgins. Take them. But they, 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 they won't. They, they don't want them. They want the men. And, and, uh, 
As the crowd starts to come around, the angels pull out into the house and close the door and cause blindness to come upon all of those outside waiting. And um, he, they, he, they can't find the door to get in. So the men are safe. And then in the morning, fifth, verse 15, when the morning dawned, the angel says, get up, take your wife, your daughters, or you're going to be consumed. So here it's Lot, his wife, and two daughters. And the two sons-in-law had been invited. And, uh, but they chose to stay in the city because they were of the city. So it was just Lot and his wife and two daughters. He took them, and he says, the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, and the Lord being merciful to him, they brought him outside and left him outside of the city. And then they said, flee for your life. Don't look back. Go to the mountains. And Lot pleaded and said, I don't, I don't want to go to the mountains. I want to go to this other town. So he went to this other town and they waited until Lot was safely away. And then, uh, then it rained, you know, then in verse 24, the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven. You know, the Lord did this. It wasn't, it wasn't Lot, it wasn't Abraham, it wasn't Moses, it wasn't Noah, it wasn't, it wasn't anybody but God. And, you know, it, it was one of the things of God seeing his creation and just, you know, being remorseful that he had created human beings in his own image. I mean, I don't know, remember when we talked about that just a little while ago, God, God was saddened that he had created humans because of the depravity, because of everything that was going on. And so here, you know, we're, we're in such an early part of the history, and there's so much that has gone on already in the world. And yet, even though God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he had, he had rescued Lot and his wife and his daughters. He had, he had saved them. He had set them aside from that. But even in that, Lot's, Lot's wife turned around to look because she was still a part of everything going on. And it says that she was turned into a pillar of salt. So it was only Lot and his two daughters that successfully escaped all of the destruction that God rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah. But yet within that, we see... God being faithful to those who believe and trust in him. And that's, you remember, Abraham is judged as righteous because of his faithfulness. Here again, Lot and his daughters were faithful to God, and God was faithful to them.